Hi, I'm Jan Ozer. Over the next few minutes, I'll outline what you need to know to produce H.264 video files for Flash, QuickTime, and Silverlight. Here's our agenda. First, I'll define H.264. Then talk about why quality varies by encoding tool and identify the tools that produce the best results. Finally, I'll detail the most common H.264 related configuration parameters that most encoding tools enable. Those are profiles, B frames, reference frames, and entropy encoding. What is H.264? Well, H.264 is today's IT codec because it was jointly created by the ISO and ITU, two standards bodies that together control the cell phone, radio and TV, photography, computer, and consumer electronics industries. Throw in the fact that Apple, Adobe, and Microsoft have all adopted H.264, and you've got a technology with lots of momentum. H.264 is like a present that comes in many wrappers, or file formats. MP4 is the official H.264 format, while M4V is Apple's variant for iTunes, MOV files are produced for QuickTime playback, F4V for Flash, and so on. The key point is that irrespective of the wrapper, the encoding options will be the same. Everything that we discuss going forward will apply equally whether you're producing H.264 for Flash, QuickTime, or some other playback medium. One unique characteristic of H.264 is that unlike Windows Media Video and VP6, which are controlled by single vendors, Microsoft of course for Windows Media and on2 for VP6, many different vendors have produced H.264 codecs and their quality varies significantly. In my tests, main concept has been the consistent winner, though Dekus has really narrowed the gap in the last few versions. Apple's codec and compressor is clearly the least efficient H.264 codec, especially for HD output. Apple's quality is good if you don't really care about the data rate, but if you're seeking top quality at the most efficient data rate, look elsewhere. Where can you find these codecs? Main Concept has the lion's share of the encoding tools, including Sorensen Squeeze, Adobe Media Encoder, and Rosette Carb Encoder. Dekus is found primarily in Telestream products, while, as far as I know, Apple is now only used in compressor. One caveat. Unfortunately, if you're producing H.264 video files, you'll see a completely different presentation of the encoding options in each encoding tool, and many don't expose all the options that I discuss. This is a general explanatory video. If you're looking for encoder-specific direction, check out other videos on the Streaming Learning Center site. Here are the H.264 parameters that I'll discuss. Profiles, B-frames and I-frames, and entropy encoding. When producing H.264 video, you'll have a number of unique encoding options. First is the choice of profile. Briefly, profiles define the types of encoding techniques that can be used to produce the H.264 bitstream. There are multiple profiles, but the three we care most about are the baseline, main, and high profiles. As you can see from this Wikipedia chart, the more advanced the profile, the more techniques it uses to produce the bitstream. The big question is, do these additional techniques produce better quality? And the answer is yes. Here you see two files encoded to identical parameters, resolution, data rate, and the like, with the file on the left produced using the high profile and on the right using the baseline profile. Obviously, the quality is better on the left. But that quality comes at a cost. Specifically, the advanced algorithms used in the higher profiles produce a bitstream that's harder to decode. So, you never want to produce a stream that's too complex for the playback device to play. The general rule here is to use the baseline profile when producing for iPods and other devices, and the high profile when producing for computer playback, whether for Flash, QuickTime, or Silverlight. A quick note on levels. Levels don't enable or disable additional encoding techniques. They simply limit the resolution or data rate of a file within a particular profile. When producing for a device, you need to limit your parameters to the level supported by that device. Otherwise, the file won't play. However, on computers, the Flash, QuickTime, and Silverlight players support any level up to and including 1080p, which makes levels irrelevant for choosing your encoding parameters. Instead, the most important factor is the power of the computer that's going to play back the H.264 stream, which is a separate discussion I won't cover here. Long story short, levels don't matter when you're producing for computers. After profiles and levels, the next choice you'll face in a typical encoder is the number of B-frames and reference frames. 
Let's start at the beginning, though, and define I, P, and B frames, which are the types of frames that make up a group of pictures, or GOP. I frames, also called key frames, are produced without reference to any other frame, typically using a technology like JPEG, just like your digital camera. These are the black frames in the screenshot above. T frames can use intraframe redundancies from previous frames for more efficient encoding, while B frames can find these redundancies in both directions. Because keyframes are so large, we want as few as possible. However, since all playback must start at a keyframe, I recommend a keyframe every 10 seconds or so, which means for a 30 frame per second file, a keyframe every 300 frames. Keyframes also improve quality at scene changes, both for that frame and all frames that refer to that frame. So, you want a keyframe at all scene changes. In episode, this means you need to elect both natural and forced keyframes. In Sorrent and Squeeze, the bottom graphic, it means that you just have to check the Auto Keyframe at Scene Change checkbox. What about B frames? Well, they definitely improve quality, as you can see in this comparison. On the left is an H.264 file encoded using B frames, while on the right, only I's and P's were used. You can see the detail preserved on the left is much greater. How much harder are files produced with B frames harder to play back? In my test, the maximum difference was about 10%. On Core 2 Duo enabled computers and higher, this was never really an issue for playback up to 1080p. If you're targeting very low power computers with very high res video, consider not using B frames. Otherwise, use B frames whenever producing for computer playback. How many B frames? The magic number I recommend is three, which creates a sequence like this IBBP, BBBP, BBBP, through to the next iframe. The other control you'll see associated with B frames is the number of reference frames, which are the frames within which a B frame can find redundancies. As you would guess, B frames find redundancies in the nearest frame, so any value beyond 5 seems to inflate search times and the resultant encoding time without really improving quality. So use 5 for reference frames when given this option. The final H.264 encoding option that I'll address is entropy encoding with two techniques available, CABAC and CAVLC. CABAC creates a higher quality, harder to decode stream, while CAVLC offers less quality but lower decode requirements. The big question is whether the quality delivered by CABAC is worth the additional playback requirement. Well, let's have a look. In my test, CABAC delivered noticeably better quality, as you can see on the left here. Most authorities place that quality advantage at between 10 and 15 percent. On the other hand, CABAC isn't that much harder to decode. On a Core 2 Duo laptop, the 8710W, it's about 1 percent harder or less. On an old G5 Power Mac, it's only 4 percent. So, I recommend using CABAC whenever it's available, which is when encoding with any profile other than the baseline. What's the market say about all this? Here are the encoding parameters that YouTube uses when producing the site's 720p video. As you can see from this chart from Media Info, YouTube uses the high profile and CABAC. Not shown in the chart, but available in other tools, is the fact that YouTube uses two B frames and three reference frames. More conservative than I'd like, but in the ballpark of the recommendations that I made. So let's summarize. When choosing an encoding tool, opt for one that uses the main concept or DECUS codec, not Apple. When producing your H.264 files, use the baseline profile for iPods and other devices and the high profile for computer playback. When configuring iframes, insert one every 300 frames and it all scene changes. With B frames, use an interval of three and five reference frames. Finally, use CABAC whenever it's available.